Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes React. I'm Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike. Office Bloke Daz. Together we are the Office Blokes. Yep. Yes. It is true. Meet the Nimitz class. The US Navy's $8.5 billion aircraft carrier. Ooh, 8.5 billion. It's wow, a couple of money, that, isn't it? That is yeah. a lot of cash. Is yeah. this the one that's in action at the moment and has gone off to uh, near Israel? I imagine it's every, I imagine it's all hands that are pumped down that area now. Yeah. I mean, aircraft carriers are pretty much... I mean, they're not the same as subs, but I mean, I think they're on the go pretty, oh, pretty much, much all, all the time, time aren't yeah, they? Yeah. 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 So. I mean, it is just... It's a forward operating base, isn't yeah, it? They can just send it anywhere. Yeah. Helicopters, fighter jets, soldiers on board, marines, all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, there'll always be... Firepower. In strategic yeah. areas, yeah, that as well. Yeah, they're but, impressive, though, aren't yeah. they? Oh, yeah, what a piece like of Like a floating town, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Let's check it out, Huge. then. Meet the Nimitz class, US Navy's $8.5 billion aircraft carrier. Meet the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, U.S. Navy's $8.5 billion beast. The aircraft carriers continue to be the centerpiece of the forces necessary for operating forward. In times of crisis, the first question leaders ask is, where are the carriers? Often, the presence of an aircraft carrier has deterred potential adversaries from striking against U.S. interests, Aircraft carriers support and operate aircraft that engage in attacks on airborne, afloat, and ashore targets which threaten the free use of the sea. They also participate in sustained power projection operations in support of U.S. and coalition forces. The aircraft carrier and its strike group also engage in maritime security operations to interdict threats to merchant shipping and prevent the use of the seas for terrorism and piracy. Aircraft carriers also provide unique capabilities for disaster response and humanitarian assistance. The Nimitz-class aircraft carrier consists of 10 carriers serving as the ultimate symbol of the United States superpower status. These formidable vessels stand as true behemoths, representing unparalleled weapons platforms that outshine all their nearest rivals. The aircraft carriers in this class are the USS Nimitz, USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, USS Carl Vinson, USS Theodore Roosevelt, USS Abraham Lincoln, USS George Washington, USS John C. Stennis, USS Harry S. Truman, USS Ronald Reagan, and USS George H. W. Bush. The lead ship of the U.S. class, USS Nimitz, nicknamed Old Salt, was commissioned in May 1975, named after Admiral Chester Nimitz, who led the U.S. Navy through World War II. And the last of the class, USS George H.W. Bush, was commissioned in January 2009. At 1,092 feet, the Nimitz-class supercarriers are more than three times the length of a football field. And with a crew complement of over 5,000 members, they're essentially floating cities. All the ships of the class are powered by two A4W nuclear reactors housed in separate compartments. The reactors produce heat through nuclear fission which heats water to produce steam. These are then passed through four turbines, which are then shared by the two reactors. A gearbox transmits power to four propeller shafts, producing a maximum speed of over 30 knots and a maximum power of 260,000 brake horsepower. I never knew that's wow. how they worked. Mm. <clears throat> I knew they were nuclear powered, but yeah. I didn't know what that how meant. Yeah, how it transformed. I didn't know they were nuclear powered, mm. to be honest. So that means they could basically stay at sea. Forever, yeah. indefinitely. Yeah, with, obviously. Yeah, maintenance, maintenance, yeah, and yeah. your uh, supplies. But uh, yeah. yeah, wow. I mean, it's that's crazy, not a bad isn't pace. It? That really is it when you see yeah. the size of it. And oh, powering to thirty knots. Jesus, is that just a beast? That's a it? lot of power. With Five thousand people on it, and all that arsenal, and all the, the, the weapons, yeah. everything. It's crazy, oh, it's isn't it? You huge. can see why. You can see why when any kind of like, I mean, you see what's happening now when it's like you know uh, tensions are rising, sort of like in certain areas yeah. of the world. And then you just put a air, few aircraft carriers into the region, and all of a sudden it's like flexing. Yeah, isn't it? a few. You got ten of them. So, yeah, no. I didn't realize I mean, had that many. To be yeah. honest, I didn't know they had that many. But you just see, it's like flexing, and just all I say, this is what's going to just yeah, be we're careful. Right, we're, we're, watch, here, we're watching you, and we can yeah. strike pretty much any time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that looked like it had, I don't know, twenty aircraft mm. on top of it, and I'm sure we saw something about an aircraft carrier where there was aircraft underneath, underneath as well. Yeah. yeah, that's where they stored them. Yeah, but there, yeah. there was. Um, there was also like landing boats and mm. all types of other stuff underneath. Oh, yeah, equipment in there. Yeah. So it's like it's literally mobile invasion mm. thing. I've got a fear. I mean, it could be wrong on this, but I think when the sailing, I mean, I think I think all of them can be stowed away. Yeah, correct. Because if it's really makes really sense. Sense. Yeah. they don't have them on the deck no. or anything. No. So I'd lose space them, for all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, makes definitely. sense. 
The turbines powered the four bronze propellers, each with a diameter of 25 feet and a weight of 66,000 wow. pounds. Behind these are the two rudders, which are 29 feet high and 22 feet long. As a result of nuclear power, the ships are capable of operating continuously for over 20 years without refueling and are predicted to have a service life of over 50 years. Wow. These warships, which have a displacement of 104,000 tons, were all built by Huntington Ingalls Industries Newport News Shipbuilding based in Virginia at a unit cost of approximately $8.5 billion. Carrier Air Wing Of course, the real strength of a carrier lies in its air wing. During the Cold War, carrier air wings were larger than today's. In the 1980s, a typical carrier air wing consisted of two squadrons of 12 F-14 Tomcat Air Superiority Fighters, two squadrons of 12 F-A-18 Hornet Multi-Role Fighters, one squadron of 10 A-6 Intruder Attack Bombers, one squadron of 4-6 to six E-2 Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning and Control Planes, 10 3A Viking Anti-Submarine Planes, one squadron of 4 EA-6B Prowler Electronic Warfare Planes, and a squadron of six SH-3 anti-submarine helicopters. With slight variations from carrier to carrier and cruise to cruise, the average Nimitz-class carrier during the Cold War carried between 85 to 90 wow, aircraft. Wow. Today, the carrier air wing looks quite different. Its composition is designed to enable broad striking power hundreds of miles from the carrier's position, while also providing defense in depth for the battle group through the early warning and detection of airborne surface and subsurface targets. The current U.S. Navy carrier air wing comprises four strike fighter squadrons, each with 10 or 12 F-A-18 EF Super Hornets, or three Super Hornet squadrons and one 10 aircraft squadron of F-35C Lightning IIs, totaling over 40 strike fighters. The air wing also includes one electronic attack squadron, which is composed of seven EA-18G Growlers. Additionally, there's one carrier airborne early warning squadron equipped with four E-2C Hawkeyes or five E-2D advanced Hawkeyes. The air wing further includes one helicopter sea combat squadron with eight MH-60S Seahawks and one helicopter maritime strike squadron with 11 MH-60R Seahawks with three to five of them typically based in detachments on other ships of the carrier strike group. A fleet logistics support squadron detachment comprised of two C-2A Greyhounds is also part of the air wing. In 2021, the new CMV-22B Osprey from the newly established fleet logistics multi-mission squadron detachments began to replace the C-2A Greyhounds. It's a lot of hard wow. to take out if you're going to attack it, isn't it? Big time, yeah. The cost of it. To, I mean, what is it, 8.5 billion? Is that just for the carrier? I, I presume it was the build, yeah, it, wasn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. All the equipment that goes on it. I, yeah. I wonder what the, the actual uh, overall value is. Oh, it'd be, oh, it'd be absolutely mind blowing. Yeah. It'd be a complete guess. It's probably over 100 billion, I'm guessing, but. I don't know. A lot, I suppose these wow. fighter jets cost a fortune yeah. each, yeah. don't they? Yeah. 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 Just thinking of, you know, if you see an attack coming when you're on here. All those, all those jets just scramble, the helicopters go. If you're attacking that, you've got no chance. No. It's a kamikaze Especially mission. Especially when you've got the defense yeah. systems like this we're going to get into now as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, because the radars and stuff, they'll be absolutely yeah. unbelievable, won't they? I'm yeah. sure a lot of the times they'll probably have a sub as well, yeah. knocking about the same mm -hmm. area of yeah, distance. Probably. So. Yeah, this is just what you see. Mm. And if you go for yeah. it, you're going to see other things. Oh, yeah. Really, yeah. really yeah. defense systems will be absolutely mind blowing on things like this, I'm guessing. Yeah. Nimitz defensive systems. In addition to the aircraft they carry, Nimitz-class aircraft carriers are armed with various sophisticated weapon systems. Among these are two or three Mark 29 guided missile launching systems. Each of these systems is capable of launching either RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow missiles or RIM-7 Sea Sparrow missiles. Additionally, Nimitz-class carriers are equipped with three or four 20mm Phalanx six-barreled Mark 15 close-in weapon system SeaWiz installations. These automated gun systems are designed to engage and destroy close-in yeah. threats with a remarkable rate of fire of 3,000 rounds per minute. They're essential Jeez. components of the carrier's defense mechanism, ensuring rapid and effective responses to incoming threats. The carriers also feature two Mark 49 guided missile launching systems, with each capable of launching RIM-116 rolling airframe missiles, the RAM is a quick reaction fire and forget missile system used for close-in defense against anti-ship missiles. 
Furthermore, the carriers are equipped with Mark 38 25 mm machine gun systems, which provide additional close-in defense and are used for engaging surface threats, especially enemy swimmers and fast surface craft. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Enemy swimmers. <laughs> Enemy swimmers. You're not going to swim to that, are you? And take it over. Okay. Watch, watch, watch <laughs> this. <laughs> Nothing left underneath. of it. Yeah. I suppose, wow. like, swimming is probably a bigger threat because, like, a big boat, you're not mm. going to know, but no. someone swims up and puts charges on the boat. Mm. And yeah. They'd have things. to be carrying a lot of charges to make a dent in a boat like that, though. Wouldn't they? Yeah. Not just well, one, one, mean, one but... of those bullets and you just explode and you yeah. shark, you shark food, idea. don't you? Yeah. Nimitz Class Carrier Strike Group. When an aircraft carrier deploys, it takes a carrier strike group, CSG, made up of several other warships and supply vessels that allow the operation to be carried out. The armament of the Nimitz Class is made up only of short range defensive weapons used as a last line of defense against enemy missiles and aircraft. As with all surface ships, an aircraft carrier is particularly vulnerable to attack from below, specifically from submarines. An aircraft carrier is a very expensive, hard to replace, and strategically valuable asset, and therefore it logically has immense value as a target. Due to their high value as targets and vulnerability, aircraft carriers are always accompanied by at least one submarine for protection. The other mm -hmm. vessels in the strike group offer additional capabilities, such as long-range Tomahawk missiles or the Aegis combat system, and provide defense against potential threats. A typical strike group may consist of the following. In addition to an aircraft carrier, up to six surface combatants, including guided missile cruisers and guided missile destroyers, primarily used for anti-aircraft warfare and anti-submarine warfare, as well as frigates warship prior to their retirement from the United States Navy service. When the Navy commissions a new Constellation class frigate, they'll once again accompany carrier strike groups. Also part of the group are one or two attack submarines for the purpose of locating and neutralizing hostile surface ships and submarines, as well as an ammunition, oiler, and supply ship provided by Military Sea Lift Command to offer logistical support. The numbers and types of vessels comprising each strike group can vary from group to group based on deployments, missions, and availability. I wonder what the total firepower is coming towards yeah. you if all, like all those boats are yeah. there all the jets yeah. are up all the helicopters yeah. uh -huh. like what what the <laughs> damage they could inflict <laughs> yeah. you know in a, let's say a 10 minute span mm. like what could they actually achieve in that time they could take a lot of things out it's a absolutely huge amount goodness. yeah the amount of firepower like I say with all the jets and the helicopters and all the you know defense systems they've got mm. and then the frigates as well near and destroyers you know it's uh and then you've probably got loads of uh yeah, like lot. navy seals and marines on <clears throat> dinghies <laughs> coming up behind all the yeah. Water. yeah yeah it's crazy isn't it yeah. the end of an era pre-planning for the deactivation of the uss nimitz currently the united states' oldest active aircraft carrier is beginning nimitz class carriers were initially designed to have a 50-year service life at the end of their service life ships will be decommissioned this process will first take place on Nimitz and is estimated to cost from $750 to $900 million. This compares with an estimated $53 million for a conventionally powered carrier. Most of the difference in cost is attributed to the deactivation of the nuclear power plants and the safe removal of radioactive material and other contaminated equipment. According to the schedules outlined in the Navy's long-range shipbuilding plan, submitted to the U.S. Congress in March 2023, it now appears that the USS Nimitz will be retired in 2026. Previously, reports indicated that the offloading process would begin in 2025 with the official inactivation of the vessel scheduled for 2027. Following the retirement of the USS Nimitz, the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower is expected to retire the following year. Other Nimitz-class aircraft carriers are also waiting for their turn to be retired. Farewell. The Navy plans to replace the Nimitz-class carriers with the Gerald R. Ford-class carriers on a one-for-one -one basis over the next three decades. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, immense, it's, immense size. Oh, absolutely huge, aren't they? Absolutely. I'd love to go around one of yeah. them. I mean, that's just, you look at the outside of it, mm. don't you imagine what it's like inside? It yeah. must be like an absolutely cavernous. Oh, 5,000 people, yeah. as well as equipment and everything else. You've just yeah. seen like the top of the top of the boat there, aren't you? The rest mm. of it, you yeah, know, correct. below there. It's, correct. Oh, 
Yeah. It seems a yeah, shame a to huge. decommission them. Well, they're bringing new ones yeah. more modern. I know they are, yeah. Yeah. but like in peacetime, that seems to make a lot of sense. But if things really kicked off, you'd be quite thankful for having another one oh, they'd be, available. They'd probably, they'd probably not decommissioned immediately, I would imagine. I, imagine well, I, think, I think they were saying they were doing it one for one, weren't yeah. they? They yeah, decommission, but, yeah. but they've probably got another one being built. Yeah. By, speak, the time, by the time it gets decommissioned, the new one will be, another new one will be out. Sort yeah, of thing, and that'll be, yeah. Yeah. There's no way the US will leave themselves short. No, Absolutely no chance. No chance. Yeah. I suppose... The up- well in advance. The upkeep as well is probably mm, yeah, ridiculous yeah. for yeah. them, isn't it? Yeah, mm. I think, like I say, I guess going forward, if they've been there for like 30, 40 years, yeah. you know, the newer technology and stuff like that, they probably incorporate into them mm. as well, don't they? So better gas mileage and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> well, with nuclear, I don't know whether <laughs> it can yeah, get exactly. better than that, really. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah it's, it, it can be powered for 20 years, but then it'll be retired after 50. I'd retire it after 60 and you only have to charge it twice. <laughs> well, twice after its initial go. Yeah, yeah. We'll get in. True. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Cheers.